Okay, so the analytic functions, here's the first one. Notice we have a sum of salary. We're going to get the employee number, last name, and salary. And so that's all fairly standard. We're going to order it by employee number, so it's in sorted order by employee number. And then we want a cumulative running total to see what's the total uh, up to the, each point. So what we do is we say sum the salary over order by EMPNO. So the order by tells us what the sorted order is going to be. So this order by up here in the analytic function should be the same generally as the order by in the actual SQL command. And then notice what happens. Cumulative salary is 8. 8 plus 8 is 16, plus 12 more is 28. This gives you running totals. So here what we have is a, a uh, analytic function that's the sum with an over clause and an order by. Whenever you see the over clause, this, this is the key that says this sum is not an aggregate, it's an analytic. Without the over clause, sum and salary is, is simply an aggregate function. We've been using those for years. But with the over clause, it becomes an analytic function. Well, this is of, of some use. And in a lot of cases, we can see where this would be very useful. But uh, we're going to have a lot more capabilities than just this. Now, remember I said analytic functions have two main purposes. One is they give us capabilities of doing things in a, in, that we can't do in normal SQL and we need workarounds. And secondly, they do it very efficiently. And the reason it's so efficient is we're telling Oracle exactly what we want to do. So Oracle can implement it in SQL under the covers to do these things in a very efficient way. If you don't have this kind of syntax for analytic functions, you can generally get the same results, but you have a lot more work to do, and it's a lot less efficient. So just to highlight that, that whole concept, let's think of how we would do this particular query, getting running totals without an analytic function. And there were workarounds. So let's take a look at the workaround. This was the old way to do it before analytic functions. What did we have to do? We selected the employee number, last name, and salary. But now we have a subquery within the select clause for the next, next column. And remember, this is supposed to be running totals. So we're going to use a trick, a workaround. We're going to select sum of salary from employee E2, the same employee table, but the outer employee table is E1, the inner one is E2 where e2.empno is less than or equal to e1.empno. Remember, we're ordering by empno. So what this little trick does is it says, hey, go sum all the salaries for the employee, e, for the employee's em number, as long as the number is less than the employee number that we're up to. And that will give us these running totals that we saw done simply with an analytic function. But notice what we're doing here. We have a subquery that is a correlated subquery. The inner query references e1.empno, which is a column from the outer query. And, 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 as, uh, and as we know, whenever you have a correlated subquery like this, it re-executes the inner query for every row in the outer query. That's the issue. So let me go and jump into SQL Plus just to show you how this might work. I have a function called analytic functions2. Let's see if we have that. Here it is. Here's analytic functions2. And this is a little query. And the first thing it does here is it creates a table with a lot of rows in it, a whole bunch of rows. So it's going to create that. Then it's going to use the analytic function and trace the result here for the analytic function and time how long it takes to run this query with an analytic function. And then it comes down here and does the same thing with the built-in subquery that's a correlated subquery and times that. So that's what we're going to do here in this query. So let's go back here. I'm going to run my analytic functions to query. First thing it's doing is it's running around and building with some random data a table to do the analysis with. And 
Once we have that table, we can then run both queries. So here's the first one. We're in the first query, and it does a pause, and it waits. So let's look at the first query. The first query does a select with a sum of salary over order by ID. OK, we're doing it for all rows, and we have 70, almost 72,000 rows that were selected. It started at 13.10.52. It ran, and it ended at 13.10.53, a second, one second to do that. OK, so with the analytic function, when we want running totals, and think of it, if you were going to generate running totals, it's very easy. As you get the rows, all you would do is just add the value to the, to the subtotal. It it's really a very easy process if you know what you want to do. But the next one is going to do it the old way, where we didn't have analytic functions, so we needed that workaround. So let's hit Enter here, and now this is running. Now remember, the other one took a second, probably between, you know, between a half a second and a second and a half, somewhere in that range. And this one's running. And this one's still running. And I'm going to leave this one running, and we'll come back to it later and see how long it took to run this. But as you can see, we're talking about not an order of magnitude, multiple orders of magnitude, many, many times longer to do it the old way. So analytic functions do things that you cannot do directly in SQL. You have to have workarounds, and therefore they're vastly more efficient, and they do things that you can't do directly and easily in SQL. You need to come up with a workaround. So I'm just going to minimize that, and we will go back to the to that later and see how long it actually took. So that's that's that function. So all we've done so far in analytic functions is a running total, but we can do a lot more with analytic functions than just running totals. So let's see what the syntax is first, in general, for an analytic function. It's a function name, like sum, or min, or max, or average, or whatever. And it takes multiple arguments, one to three arguments, depending on the function. The keyword over is, is critical. We need the keyword over. And then we have three clauses. They're all optional clauses. You need one of them, but they, you don't need all three of them. The only one we've seen so far is the order by clause. You can also have a partition clause and a windowing clause. The over defines it as an analytic function, not an aggregate function. So what we're going to spend the rest, of, uh, the rest of our time with today is looking at the full syntax and seeing how we can do some of the things that we discussed up front, like not just running totals, but running totals within a department so it restarts at a department, or ranking and a number of other capabilities. OK, first let's look at the partition clause. The partition clause breaks the result set into different groups. And the function that we're using, sum, min, max, average, and so on, works independently on each group. If you don't have a partition clause, there is a default group, which is the entire result set. Well, let me go back a couple of pages here. And look, here we had an order by that said, give me running totals, of course I did sums, with no partition. So the partition was the entire result set, so it went through the whole result set. Never reset anything, because there was no partition. Now let's come back here to the partition clause. The optional, it's optional, the default group is the entire result set, which we just saw. But if you partition, then it starts the the running totals over again for each individual partition. Well, this sounds familiar. What is, it, what, is it, what is it similar to? It's similar to the normal group by for aggregate functions. If you say sex select sum of salary from employee, you're, you don't have a group by. Therefore, the default group is the entire result set. Nice and easy. 